We're going back to the east coast of Florida this week, and we are talking with Mark Burford from Florida Surf Tackle. You've probably heard me mention that before, that brand, those rods. There is a whole series over the bar. Oh, man, uh, we're going to go into a whole bunch of ones, actually. I'm not going to blow all that out here, but uh, I'm going to start with a quick one and basically say I was lucky and got to test out the 10-foot over the bar and it is by far one of my favorite rods to throw rigs and set rigs. It's a really cool mixture. It's at the different length, which is fun. So we're going to talk a lot about that today with Mark. So I hope you're happy, or I hope you're ready, because we're getting into it. You're listening to Final Demo Surf Fishing. Here we go. New week, new episode. A lot of good information coming your way. We have a lot to cover. There's so much to ask Mark today. Uh, again, if you haven't heard of Mark, you can go take a look at him on social media, Florida Surf Tackle. Uh, it is floridasurftackle.com. He's also on Facebook, Florida Surf Anglers Group, and Florida Surf Tackle. You can find both on there. Mark is a well-known individual, hell of an angler, great guy. Uh, I've had the distinct pleasure of hanging out with him and fishing with him a few times, and he may be modest and you know downplay, but the man is amazing at fishing, and he's got a great product. So this week we're really going to dig into that and have some fun asking him a bunch of his knowledge while we can. So without further ado, Mark, welcome to the show, sir. Hey, man, it sure is great to be here. I've been looking forward to this, uh, listening to Finding Demo from the beginning. So uh, I'm looking, re- I'm ready to have a good time. I appreciate that. You, you were one of the first, were like, hey, you should do this when I was talking to people about it. You're like, go for it. Nothing could, nothing could go wrong, right? So I thank you for that. Sure. What do we got here? So we're going to get right in um, before we get into the fluff stuff, because th- this is the fun thing. Um, I did mean what I said. You are one of the best best anglers i know you've had a lot of years of this of fishing a lot of experience you fish with a lot of anglers and have picked up tons of knowledge along your journey of fishing so let's start back at the beginning what got you into fishing well you know um as a kid my father used to take us fishing and we were mainly freshwater um so i was i was brought up freshwater fishing and not really a lot of salt water salt water but living here in florida you know, I don't know why, but we just didn't do a lot of surf uh, fishing. Um, when I was older, when I was 50 years old, I had some health issues. And I was I was a golfer, and I was playing golf every weekend, and I was that guy that I was living for the weekends ready to go golf. But um, I couldn't I couldn't play golf. I had um, real bad um, muscle cramps and all that. So at church, I was going to church, and Noel Kuhn uh, was – he was at our church and he says, Hey, why don't you come and go with me? Let's go fishing. And uh, this was when, before Noel really started his guide service. And I used to hang out with him on the beach and uh, meet him there and fish his gear. I didn't even have my own gear. So uh, really, Noel was my introduction to surf fishing. And I was the guy that got to go with him, got to pull the cart, do that stuff. And I got to reel in rods. But at that point, I wasn't allowed to cast his rods because <laughs> I, I was the rookie. So uh, that's how I got started. And then, you know, um, you buy your first two rods from Academy, and then, you know, it all started from there. Yeah, the stores seem to get us real quick there. Academy is a great place to start. Yep. It was, you know, they're not around anymore, but I bought uh, two two 12-foot rods there and spinning reels, and then those got damaged. So I I went and got two more, and uh, after that, then I got hooked on, a couple of custom rods uh, that a friend of mine made for me, and uh, I've been at it, been at it ever since. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So, from the beginning to now, how has your fishing style changed over the years? Well, you know, I've I've been lucky to fish with a lot of good, knowledgeable fishermen here in North Florida, and uh, I was a member, still am a member, of one of the oldest surf fishing clubs in Florida. It's, uh, Florida surf casters. So in that club, there are so many guys that have 
have been through it all surf fishing that it's kind of like what we're doing here it's that freely shared knowledge and we would have fishing days on the beach or casting days or rig time days so you know as i progressed in in surf fishing i, I got that knowledge along the way and it's still changing every day you know you learn something every day with with the YouTubers or so much information being passed around, um, you never have it. You can, you can always pick something up. Yeah, absolutely. Knowledge is key nowadays. I mean, it, hell, we all build off each other. Yeah, you know, everybody's standing on somebody absolutely. else's shoulders with knowledge. Absolutely. So it, it's, I love that about our community. I truly do. I love that we're all willing to teach people and work together and, I don't know, just make it all better in general. So thank you it for is, that. I- Sure, it's a, it's a great community to be in. Yep. So let's move into your fishing game. When you go or you plan to go fishing, uh, what do you what do you do? How do you plan your fishing trips? You know, when when I'm planning a big day fishing, the first thing I do is check the tides. Over here in Florida, you know, we could have six, eight, ten feet of tide change, and you know, four tides a day. It's kind of different than the Gulf Coast. Yeah. So. Make sure that, you know, where you're planning is, um, you know, it's going to be the right tide for you because different beaches, whether it's a high impact beach or a low impact beach, um, you have different uh, ways to go at it. So on a flat beach at high tide, it's hard to reach the fish. So, you know, that might be a low tide beach or a two hour beach, two hours of low tide, two hours of the income. So, you know, I kind of planned it my day before. I check it out. I have to look at the cameras if I don't have some intel and see what the beach looks like because you're sure don't want to fish dirty water. So I start planning the day before. It's check the tides, check the cameras, see what's going on, plan my bait. Um, You know, I'll go buy crabs or clams the day before where I'm not running around the morning of my fishing trip trying to find something and having to settle for what they have. So, and then you know, the big thing for me is to get my truck loaded. So I'm not up so early in the morning. I'm loading my cart, which I have three of now. Um, load, load my cart in the truck and really trying to figure out which rods I'm taking that day. Um, I, I pretty much have everything planned and in the truck except for, you know, my ice or drinks for the day. I didn't know you were running three carts. I've only seen your one cart. I have the huge cart. And then I have a Brian Kirtlet stand-up cart. Oh, I love Brian's carts. Perfect for stairs. And then I have a new two-wheeler cart that I pull behind my e-bike. So I can get on those long, flat beaches and and go up and down the beaches and not have to pull a cart and pull it with my e-bike. I remember you talking about that, but I didn't know you actually... Did you just build that one or have you had that for a while? Um, it's, I've had it for a couple of months. And, you know, trying to make sure I have everything right and... Anytime I fish, I want to fly a flag. So I have to figure out, you know, my rods, maybe three rods and a flag that day. But um, I always have the flag with me. So, uh, yeah, it's worked out pretty well. I've used it five or six times. And on those hard-packed beaches, man, it's great. You can you can check out troughs a, a mile down the road or a, a run out and really uh, get on it. Yeah, it's one of the – backing up a smidge but yeah i remember the last time we talked about it was at uh roy's uh tournament you you had mentioned it uh going there uh or building the cart let me finish my yep it's there. nothing fancy uh, it's a junior cart with uh two 16 inch wheelsies on it and i've got it fixed where i can uh, hook it to my e-bike and uh get on that thing and just get down the sand yeah, I love that about your guys' beaches because you do have such a great hard pack on some of your some of them that you can go forever there. That's true. Oh, all I'm thinking about is you cannot. <laughs> it's like soft up there, stay away from there, and get down there a little <laughs> further. It's okay. <laughs> right. That's a beach you can ride forever. Oh wow! Really? Look- oh yeah. All right, that sounds like a lot of fun. So you've got, with the high impact and the low impact, um, talking about the tides, first, uh, last two of the outgoing, first two of the incoming, a yeah, huge difference. Uh, that's one of the great crazinesses that I have when I come fishing with you guys is I know the tides are going to be the major important factor of how far we're going to be able to go and not go. So with that being said, um, 
how do you select a spot? Well, you know, I think everybody has their favorite spot. Um, if I was going to say my favorite spot is Surfside Park, which is um, Volano Beach in St. Augustine. Um, I just love that. I can, you can fish that beach um, any tide, high tide, low tide, um, and it's easy access. You know, when you get up, when you get up a few years in age, you kind of, you know, that's a factor anymore. Just trying to figure out where you can fish is how easy it is to get on the beach and off the beach. But, um, you know, I, certain beaches hold different fish, and you just kind of kind of plan it that day that, all right, I'm, you know, it's it's early in the spring. I want to fish on the north side of Jacksonville. Papano run started, or, you know, it's if it's going to fire off, it's going to fire off on the north end first. So, you know, you may fish Bernardina or come on down to Hug Little Talbot or Huguenot, and you kind of plan it that day. And somebody that fishes every day will know exactly where the fish are. But the people that don't fish every day, you know, you got to guess, but you got to be willing to move too. Because if you go somewhere and you start fishing and you're not catching, you might as well pack it up and move after 30 minutes and maybe an hour at the most and be willing to move to, uh, to get to the perfect spot. Mm -hmm. that, that is in the for, if you guys anybody hasn't been onto this stretch the the trip from Jacksonville to St. Augustine down A1A is what 45 ish yeah yep yep so you, you, you've got so many different great places you can go in between you know stopping uh, hell I mean you got Marine Land uh, Huguenot you, you've got so many great options for fishing it's I love your guys' beaches for that. I love the fact that you can go that far in that stretch and, and just pick an access and go, even though you got to yep. deal with the people sometimes. That's right. Most of the time you can get to a spot where there's not a lot of people, especially during the week, which, you know, that's one of my favorite times to fish now is uh, during the week. Yep. So you don't have to have the, the people in front of the condos where you can pretty much do what you want. Perfect. So you being a – tackle shop you have the ability to basically get your hands on anything what is your typical setup for you to fish and what i mean by that is rods reels rigs what, what do you like to use well on, on a typical day if i'm taking my big card it's four rods um i take uh a, tw a two thirteens and my 13 the first one will be in uh over the bar uh, my long rod whether it's a surf 13 or an over the bar 13. Um, kind of depends on what reel I have on them. Um, but I'll take a 13, two 12s, and then a 10 and an or an 11. Um, that 13 is going to get you along, and then I use my 12s from my, for my medium range, and then the uh, 11 or 10 for my short cast. Because you want to cover, you want to cover all the area until you find the fish, and the fish, and then you want to target that area. So uh, I'm a conventional guy. Um, I would say 99% of the time when I'm on the beach, I'll have all conventional reels. Um, I just like, I like the, the way they cast. I like to fish with them. And sometimes it's a challenge, but um, you know, you, you pick, you pick that bird nest out and you keep going. Yeah. It's because of you that I actually mean, well, I won, Luckily, I won one drawing from your shop with the Accios, uh, 656, if I'm not mistaken. And, That's it. Uh, it. It kicked my ass. <laughs> I'll admit that to get a learning down. But it's, you know, now that I've got it dialed in, I've learned it, it's it's a good reel. It, it's still, you know, I, I'm still a diehard. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, There's, you know, when you're fishing, when you're fishing spin and tackle, um, it takes a lot of the uh, thinking out of it. You pick it up. Yeah, you tie drag and you reel it in, and when you're fishing a conventional reel, you pick it up, you tighten the drag a little bit, and then you start thumbing that line on uh, to try to get it to lay flat on that reel as you retrieve it. And the big thing on that end is once you get that fish in, and you get them off, then you have to recast. Well, if you have that line on flat, and you have a big ball in it, and you cast it back out, then you're going to have a bird's nest. So you know. What do you do? Well, if I did that and I get excited with a bit uh, a fish and I have a ball in it, I short cast it and get it ready to cast again so I'm not blowing it up. So, you, you know, you got to give up something uh, when you're fishing. So my conventional, I have less friction 
with a conventional reel as opposed to a spinning reel. Mm -hmm. And I crossed that, I crossed over to the dark side quite a few years ago and I just, I don't, you know, I'm staying there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not, one of the nice things too, which you told me when I got the six by six is you're like, well, Hey, it's nice because you get the level wind, which you know really takes the thumbing out of the game, but it gives you, it gives you that taste for, what a conventional can do you know once you get Absolutely. to the point after you get the level wine because you're going to lose a little bit of distance with the level wine system it's just it's part of it. you got a little bit of restriction or i'm sorry resistance there um yeah. but it's still you're you're talking very minute it's a great reel yeah Akios is uh since i was introduced to Akios, um I, I really love that reel i've had i was before that i was fishing uh pen 525 mags and uh, they're great reels. If you can find some today of the older ones, I would suggest picking them up and hold them on to them uh, because they're just still great reels. You can fish with them and fish with them hard and not have any problems. And then when you jump on the Akios, it's like fishing with butter. Yeah, it makes sense. That's a true yeah, one there. Right. So you're running over the bars, 13, 12, 11, 10. Um, are you... Are you running any of the other ones of the Florida Surf Tackle Series too, or does that just depend on the I, cart? I, I kind of, I, I kind of like the um, the bullet, the twelve foot bullet is probably my favorite rod to fish. It is a great rod. Uh, <laughs> it really can, is. Great, you can get great distance with that rod. I'm talking, you know, with a, a nice easy cast, probably 120, 130. If you get on it, you'll get 150 uh, with a conventional reel and three or four four ounces for me. Um, but uh, I always, I always choose my weights by what I'm casting, not by current. If I'm casting a 13 footer, I like five ounces on there because I feel like I load that rod better with five ounces. I don't fish if the current's not running. I'm gonna still throw a five ounce uh, sinker guy uh, Sputnik on there. Um, that's what I fish with, and I, I think I load the rods a lot better with the weights that's appropriate for the cast. Yes. And that's that, and that's a big thing on distance is, is, you know, is loading that rod. Get somebody to um, slow motion video you, and you can see that rod bend and unbend, and it's amazing how much bend is in that rod when you load it, and th they're made to handle that. Yeah, it's because of you, Chip and Noel, um, that I actually follow the same mentality. I, I used to think that I had to throw a certain weight because of current, but. Uh, I think it was you actually that was like, no, you think about think about the rod. What is the rod like? It's not always about the current. It's about what is the rod. What how, what is the best movement for the rod to get you the most distance for the least amount of work? Right. Yeah. If you're trying if you're trying to get over that big the last bar, the third bar, or whatever, you know that's what it's all about is is making that rod do what it's supposed to do. Yep. So you, you've talked about your rods, you've talked about your reels. What do you normally fish with for rigs, uh, or does it depend on what you're fishing for? Um, a lot of it is that, but but my normal rig to start with is just a double drop rig. I like um, two odd Eagle Claw circle hooks, and I fish them with floats. I fish them without floats. I fish them with beads. Um, but it's kind of, you know, it's, it's that trial and error. Um, I like white floats. I like white cutlass floats. I use them a lot, and I still like an orange bead. So double drop rig and a fish finder rig until I find the fish. And if it's something that's going to stay there, then I target that area with a double drop rig or whatever. Okay. It makes a lot of sense there. Really good stuff. So we've covered that one. All right, so you've got all your setup there. Uh, what do you normally bring for bait when you go fishing? Well, I know through through talking with everybody and, and listening from the guys that I've been around, fresh bait's always best. Um, I love to get fresh clams, and the local seafood markets normally have them pretty cheap. Pick up a dozen clams and maybe two crabs and then some uh, live shrimp on the way. Um, if, you know, if a, wait, a bait shop's open that early, um, I pick up live shrimp. And I let them die in the holder or, or in my Tupperware. So I really have fresh killed shrimp. And I use fish bites. And I try to tip my fresh bait with that same flavor of fish bite. And that's something I've done forever. You know, crab, piece of crab fish bites. Um, 
shrimp, piece of shrimp fish bites. Same way down the line. And then, you know, you got to dig your sand fleas. And sometimes they're hard to dig here, hard to find. But, you know, you have the good baits. You want to you wanna fish what the fish are eating. If you can't find sand fleas, do you think the fish are eating sand fleas? Probably not. They're probably eating the crabs or the clams or donax clams that you see on the beach. And then that's when you really target them with that bait. Yeah, something about match the hatch. <laughs> you, you guys were telling me all about that. You know, Chip really hammers it all the time. But you, especially on your guys' beaches, because you think you see sand fleas, and I learned this the hard way. Yeah, You think you see sand fleas, and you pull it up, and it's a ton of coquinas, and it's like, whoa, hey, a bunch of coquinas. Well, it's here. What are the fish going to eat? They're going to eat coquinas. Let's let's hook up that style. When you clean a fish and its, it's uh, gut is full of donax clams, then you know you've hit it right on the the, ne- the nail on the head if that's what you've been fishing with. Yeah, yep. I, I I like seeing a little sidebar, but I guess I love seeing when people are posting their catches, but afterwards the after they've cut it open, I'm like, hey, look what I found. Found shrimp. I found this. It's like, all right, next time I know I need these, this, 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 this. But you know, it, the big lesson that we all talk to each other about and say the same thing is you got to bring a myriad of bait. You cannot be a one trick pony. That's right. And if you only had one bait to take, it would be shrimp. I mean, that's what everything eats shrimp. Everything. I eat shrimp, but uh, everything eats shrimp. So, you know, I stay away from it as much as possible because catfish really love shrimp. <laughs> yeah, they and do. I try to stay away from that. Yeah, they But do. I do, t- you know, if I'm on a hot whiting bike and all they're eating shrimp, then I'm going to fill the cooler up with uh, whiting with shrimp in their bellies. That's such a good fish. I love whiting. I do too. That's you know that's my favorite fish fish to eat if I'm catching it. Yeah, yeah. It was a weird one for us this year. We we had very little whiting. It would uh it was depressing. I think it's the same way over here. It's it's all sporadic. So well, hopefully that means this year, the next year we're going to be even better on, or or the fall run we'll have a bunch of whiting back and it'll be bigger than ever. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> So moving into the business, what was the spark that got you to, to begin Florida Surf Tackle? Well, I don't, you know, a lot of people don't know the story. A friend of mine, Steve Austin, had Florida Surf Tackle. He started the Florida Surf Tackle. He was a rod builder himself. Um, he's the one who designed the Florida Surf Angler rods. All right. Um, I was, I worked for Caterpillar. I worked for Caterpillar and retired after 35 years. And, uh, Steve was wanting to um, stop working, you know, with his rods and that business and all that. He had some things come up, and um, he was offering to sell Florida Surf Tack. And I was retiring from Caterpillar about the same time. So, you know, I talked with Steve about it. said, man, I'm really interested in this. This is, this is a perfect thing to do for somebody that's retired. So, you know, I had to come, and I talked to my wife about it, and I – explained to her what it was. She knew I'd bought rods from Steve before. And Steve had Oculus rods or Oculus reels, and he had the uh, Florida Surf Angler rods. So we worked out a deal, and I actually bought Florida Surf Tackle from Steve. Um, he was He's still a support of Florida Surf Tackle and is a great guy to go to for advice. But uh, I bought the business from him um, probably 13 years ago. And I'm still going strong. Um, started off with Florida Surf Angler Rods and Oculus Reels. And now we've added the over-the-bar rods. And, you know, we got some more things coming. But uh, he started off with the Surf 13, the 12-foot bullet, the 11-foot run out, and the uh, 12-foot big one was the rods he had. So I, I just I picked it up where he had. He had customers. He had uh, product. And, you know, then I ran out of product and I had to place my first big order, which is kind of scary. Oh, I can imagine. That's, oh, <laughs> that's real right there. It is. When you send send money somewhere that somebody you've never talked to and every bit of your communication has been through email and you send them this, water, this chunk of money saying, man, I sure hope this goes through. And you're sweating bullets for like three months waiting for your first order to come in. Then it gets a little bit more easier after, you know, the first couple of times. 
Yeah, I can imagine it gets a little bit better. That's I'm glad to hear it has. And speaking of <laughs> getting better, you raised up a great point now. Baycheck, 25-minute Baycheck. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to this while fishing, it's been 25 minutes. Make sure you bring that line back in. Hopefully, you've already caught a bunch of fish and you've already limited out and you're listening to this on the car on the way home. But if you haven't, bring that line in, recheck your bait, stick more on there, get it back out, go catch those fish. This bait check was brought to you by TrueBraid, TrueBraid.com. A, Alex Lines uh, makes a great product for fishing braid. I use it, I love it. It's been a lot of fun to learn about it, and there will be an episode coming on that. But head over to TrueBraid.com, take a look, and get an order. Moving into, so I guess you kind of answered what, well, but oh, oh. I was short bait on two hooks. I'm glad you had that bait check. <laughs> uh, fishing on credit. Yeah. I've done that too many times. <laughs> so you kind of answered it, but I'll ask anyway, because I think you did. But what is Florida Surf Tackle? Well, you know, I've kind of thought about that. Florida Surf Tackle is really, that's my business. That's the name of my business. Florida Surf Tackle, LLC. And underneath Florida Surf Tackle, we have Florida Surf Angler Rods, which there are four of those from 13 down to 11 foot. And underneath that is Over the Bar Rods, which is 13, 12, and 10 foot rods. And then Oculus Reels are under Florida Surf Tackle. And coming here in the next few weeks are Sword Blades, Sword Fishing Products. Yeah! I've, I've been talking with those guys. I'm looking at a a box full of uh, fishing fillet knives in front of me right now. And I'm really excited to uh, get these things going and get them in some people's hand. And I might show up at a cleaning station around here and, and let somebody try them and get some, uh, getting some uh, input on the blades. Um, I think it, think they're a great product and I'm really, really excited about adding them to the Florida surf tackle line. Oh man, that's, I am so happy to hear that because I love swords products. They're the only knives I have my for my fillet knife. I just recently got the uh, the bait knife that I'm using for uh, Ikejime with the Ikejime fed, and it's that blade has not neither blade has failed me. And anytime I've had a question, I could always reach out to them, and they've always answered it. It's been such such a great product. It has. It's been nice dealing with them. Quick replies. Um, they have all the answers. And I'm I'm just excited about bringing them to North Florida. Congratulations, man. I think that's really great. Really. Well, thank you. So when we've talked about one set of, of rods here, how did the Over the Bar series come about? Well, you know, um, I I was looking at rods. I was I was kind of stuck. I had my Florida surf angler rods are kind of high dollar rods. They go for the 13s, $350 now. And I started talking to my friends, uh, Noel Kuhn, Chip, about these rods. And I said, you know, I want to I want to get a rod in the market and I want to come in under $200, but I want to have a, a real good rod. So I started reaching out to a, a couple of rod manufacturers and I got some samples. They came in. Um, I got them in everybody at my friend's hands. They all fished them. And I made a change in them. I, there's something I didn't like about them, so I sent them back. And I asked for, for them to make a change. And they got that next set of rods that came in. And I got them in everybody's hands. And I just, I kind of sat on them. I said, man, do I, do I dilute Florida Surf Angler rods by coming out with another line of rods? And I kept telling myself and telling myself. And, and I just, I kind of sat on them. I didn't do anything with it. And then Chip Brundage, the sinker guy was one of the guys that, that demoed those rods. And uh, he said, hey, Mark, you want to sell those samples? He says, you're not doing anything with them. I really like those rods. Let me um, let me try. Let me have them. So we worked out a deal, and he took my samples, and he fished with them for a while. I don't remember. Was it a year or whatever? And he came back and said, Mark, he said, these are good rods. Everybody that touches them loves the way they feel. And I said, Man, but I want to do this. So I, I went to the manufacturer again and say, hey, I need two more rods. I want to make sure that you can duplicate what I already have. 
So I told them what it was, and we worked it out. I got two uh, 13 and a 12 back in, and we put them out, and they were good. And then I, I my team really is Chip and uh, Noel, and I told them, I said, hey, let's, I said, I'm going to order, I'm going to order 50 rods. I'm going to order 50 12s and 15, 13 over the party. Well, we got those in and we sold those 100 rods in 30 days. Nice. People were ask, asking, asking about them. So, you know, to turn our order of rods around, I didn't want to buy anything until I got feedback from that first 100 rods. <clears throat> but we were getting good feedback. So I said, all right, let me order. I'm going to order 100 of them. And we sold those in like 90 days, 100, 200 rods in 90 days. So that's really how it got started is uh, Chip asking me about those rods and telling me, you know, that people like them and he likes them. So <clears throat> after that, then I started ordering a couple of hundred at a time. And it's just grown from there. And they are great rods. Um, so over in our area, uh, if you all have ever come over to the Panhandle, if you follow uh, Mike Smith of Smith Surf Fishing Charters uh, and myself on our Friday Night Lives on the Panhandle Fishing Report, we actually did a, a gathering of a uh, rod demo. And we had oh, we had over the bars, we had Florida surf tackle rods, we, we had the whole series and sizes and just people told people, come on out, throw them, come, come, see, what, come see what we're talking about. And the response was all amazing. I think I think uh, what it was a couple of bullets uh, got sold on that. They were loving the bullets. A couple oh. of over the bars. Yeah, I even had people ordering them with friends so they can save on shipping and order two rods together and only ship one tube, which you know is a big savings. Yeah, it is nowadays, especially. It is. It's crazy. Yeah. So but, I mean, go ahead. It, it generated a lot of interest in. Over the bar, the Florida surf angler, um, and then Smitty fishing these rods, catching these sharks on the the twelve foot big one, and you guys over there fishing them, and I just got some more rods over there to one of our uh, good guys, and we'll really hear more about that later, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably. But you know, it's it's nice, and you know, one way to to get introduce people to the rods is, you know, you got to show it to them, you got to let them hold it, and <clears throat> that's one thing I do here. I said, you know, we'll do a demo. We'll do a, a, a demo. If you want to try it before you buy it, come on over. We'll go over to the soccer field and cast or cast out into doctor's lake, but uh, don't just buy it. And I said, if you don't like it, send it back to me and I'll give you your money back. Yeah. You, so, I know you're true to that word. You've told me that so many times and I've seen it. So I, yeah, it's good stuff right there. Yep. It's, it's been amazing. And, you know, the further this goes along, um, I think I might have sold 900 rods last year. That's a lot of fishing rods. That's a ton of rods. And, you know, everybody's loving the over the bar. And then, you know, is the Florida Surf Angler rods a step up, really, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, they, they're all great rods. I've, You know, you very seldom hear of anybody breaking one or, or snapping one. If they do, somebody's high stick one, which... You know, with any rod, that's a no-no. But um, you know, it's 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 been great. A hell of a product, and it's been fun seeing it. Well, with that, when we've talked about the two different series, but here's the grid question: With that, what is the difference between the over the bar series and the Florida Surf Angler or Florida Surf Tackles? Those blah blah. blah, blah. I can't even speak Florida, the right Florida words. Rods and over the bar rods. The uh, over the bar rod is SK carbon and nanofiber. That's the, the material that it's made out of. Um, if you see those guys on commercials where they're whipping these rods around and picking up weights with them and all that, that is more than likely uh, SK carbon and nanofiber rod. All right, they're, they're all now made with uh, Fuji guides, which in the beginning the over the bar wasn't, but uh, you know, I'm going to say it's pretty similar as far as the hardware on them. The uh, Florida Surf Angler rod is a carbon graphite rod. So, you know, when, when you start talking to people about these rods and, and you know, they're, they're fragile. Carbon fishing rods are fragile. 
Um, you know, if you nick it somewhere down the line and you're casting, you may break that rod um, just with casting. And it's not because of that cast. It's something that happened, you know, maybe weeks or months ago. So, you know, the biggest difference in the rods is the material they're made out of. The uh, over-the-bar rods, that 13-footer is a little stiffer on that tip section. But that's what allows people to cast that rod so far. And that's what people like about it. And then the over-the-bar 12 is, it's, it's really close to the Florida Surf Angler Bullet. But it's just that, that material that it's made out of is that much difference in it. And same way with the 10. So all the over-the-bars are made with the same material and all of the Florida Surf Angler rods are carbon graphite. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense that the differences. Yeah. Great bite detection, the Florida Surf Angler Surf 13. Um, if you cast that rod out 125 yards and you put it in a sand spike and you got it sinkered out with a, a Sputnik holding it in place, you'll see a two-inch whiting bite on that rod. All right. If you cast the over the bar out the same way, you probably won't see that whiting bite, a small whiting bite on the over the bar rod, but you're going to be able to cast it a long way due to the fact that it's a little bit stiffer tip. They're both great pompano rods, uh, great whiting rods with a good bite, um, red drum, black drum, you know, just about permit is what I want to put on mine, but that's what I plan on using. But uh, great, you know, they're just great rods. Yep. Yeah, I've seen with Smitty rocking it with the big end so much, going after big fish, and I mean, hell, oh, we've caught so many different ones. Uh, I know I've pulled a, a black drum, and have I got a red drum on the bullet yet? No, I haven't got a red drum yet. I got a black drum. Um, my favorite still was my black drum on the ten foot over the bar. That oh, whew, that fight was fun. <laughs> and you, you, um, you felt the over the bar because the first over the bars that I had were so stiff. Yeah. And I told when I did that sample, I said, Brian, I said, this is not what the finished product's going to look like. I said, this rod is too stiff uh, for what we we're looking for. And then when I showed you the, the over the bar that can now, I mean, it's just a, a different rod night and day. Oh, yeah. Um, I, like you guys, I've thrown lures on it. I've thrown everything with that rod. Yeah, it's that just that, that fish. Yeah, that rod. Uh, it's funny. Uh, yeah, because I called you that night, or I think I texted you that night. Actually, I didn't call you. Yeah. That I, mean, I was out throwing it, just practicing. I was throwing a two ounce. I think I was throwing a two ounce spoon, just throwing it, max casting, counting the strokes in, feeling it. You know, letting it bounce off the bottom, get get a feel for the tip, and I caught a PB bluefish. And I mean, max drag all the way down. I'm like, what the hell is on my line? And, you know, fighting me great. I'm like, this is fun. What is this? Um, and, and, you know, I, you, I that was my first, uh, I think it was my first 10-foot rod. I think it was my first. Or my I, think, I think it was. Yeah. And it, it was, I was elated. I mean, I was telling everybody, I'm like, dude, you seriously need to catch something on this. And they're like, well, it's a 10-footer. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. It's not just a 10-footer. It is, it's a perfect 10-footer. Trust me. Take this rod and go fish it. You're going to love it. Um, and a, a couple people caught it. One person, <laughs> I won't drop his name in here, said that a, a, cert, some, a certain someone he you got it from before him cursed it. He didn't get to catch anything on it. But, uh, yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, but, it, uh, but he loved it. He was like, the cast is great. The whip is great. The feel, uh, it, it's the right, you know, it. you would expect something different with how uh, thin bodied it is, but it's the perfect grip and good feel, good whip. And you can go either way. I mean, you can go spinning, you can go conventional, and it's it's a comfortable setup. Yeah, that you know that over the bar ten, you could you could cast that all day and it won't wear you out. Yeah, that's that's you know that's the big thing with these the over the bar and the Florida Surf Angler rods is they're light. If oh, yeah. you know if you hold those. 13 foot rods and you think oh man this is going to be heavy it's not they are very light rods that's one of my favorite things about the 10 um was the weight because i took it I, i've used it both rounds i i like it for set rigs no problem it is a great different uh for my ranges i can play the zones a lot different with that one but it's perfect to just have even you know it's like hey i'm just gonna go out for a couple hours all right i'm gonna walk with it 
And I think, what was it? I, I got it down to a half ounce. I think I threw a half ounce jig head, and it was still casting it probably about 60, 70 yards. And I was yeah, like, I, I cannot believe that a half ounce is moving on this thing so smooth. And it was feeling great. You know, it was it was a great range. You know, I was under the one just trying to see how far I could push this thing. I wanted to break it. I wanted to be like, nah, all right, this is where I don't like. This is, you know, and knowing that I could go a half ounce and bounce a jig head back for flounder in the surf. Oh, hell, that was smooth. Yeah, you know, when you said you you won't break it or whatever, when, when I first got these rods and you know, I, I thought this was the final thing. No, you know, no Kuhn. He can cast a mile with no effort. <laughs> yeah. And I, me and Noel went to the soccer fields with the uh, with all these over the bar rods, and we casted them with um, over the weight that they're recommended, and as hard as he could cast them, or whatever. And they they just kept going. And that's that's the beauty of these rods is, you know, are they are they unbreakable no but you can fish with them hard all day and not be afraid to get on a cast because you might break something or or catch a big fish or say oh i'm on a small rod but you know that's what they're made for yeah it's it's it's, they're fun i'm gonna tell you they're fun rods to fish with i agree i fully do so now we've been talking about the rods you've got so many different lengths and it's kind of, you know, people are like, oh, what size do I get? I mean, every different size gives, gives you range. Size. But, yeah, what, what, what's, what's the big deal with the different sizes in rods? Well, you know, there's days when the fish are close. And there's days, you know, they're so close you could, you could underhand cast and catch fish. And then there's days that you can't reach the fish because they're so far out, especially over here, maybe because of, you know, our troughs or our cuts are further out or, um, and you've got to reach over the bar. So if you want to give yourself the ability to reach the fish, then that's the reason for having the different rods, okay? 13-footer, I cast my 13, probably 160, 180. Um, my 12-foot, I'm probably good for 140, 150. So, you know, really a different length rod is, is going to give you some different distances. All right. Can you catch fish on all those rods? Yes. But the big thing is, is to get the bait in front of a hungry fish. And that's why you would go to different lengths rods. Yeah. I think you or, you or Noel, I think you both actually have said this to me. Uh, you know, it, when in doubt, you can always throw a long rod short but it is a pain in the ass to throw a short rod long. That's right. That's the whole thing. And and the whole thing is getting a, a good bait in front of a hungry fish. Yep. You know, they're not there. No matter what you're doing, you're not going to catch fish. So with both the series, both are, are all of it is all dual rung. What is they that are. and why? Well, the big thing on that is, is as a supplier, if I was going to carry rods and I was going to carry a 13-foot conventional reel rod or a 13-foot spinner reel rod, my garage is full of rods now, and it would be packed. But this also gives the fishermen the ability to fish a spinning reel or a conventional reel on the same rod. Um, it goes against your theory of, of splining a rod and all that because the uh, – the spline is, you know, you're either going to be on the top side of the spline or the inside of the spline when you're building your rods. Well, this way, you're, it's going to be against the theory, but it works. It's, uh, you know, the rods look like the uh, guides are on backwards, that first guide. Yeah. You wouldn't believe how people has called me and say, hey, this rod's built wrong. And then I explained to them that that first guide is a uh, guide turned that way so the line doesn't get in the way with it when you're fishing spinning. So there's no interference. And that's why it looks like it's on their backwards. But, you know, it works. It worked for Steve Austin when he designed Florida Surf Angler Rods a long time ago. And I carried it over to the over the bar rods. And I'm gonna tell you, there's another um, surf rod company that um, has switched from 
building spinning rods and conventional rods to building dual rung rods. So it's 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 not nothing. It's not new, but you know what? It works. Yeah, I remember you explaining that to me the first time because I mean even. It was. I was fortunate when I first met you. I was super, super green, and it was just like, "Why? I, what do you mean? That's a. That's not upside down. I don't know what upside down or right side up looks like." And now the dual <laughs> runs like, "Look, you can run either one." I was like, "Oh, well, this is great. I mean, hell, I don't have to buy new stuff." But that's right. And a lot of people will. Uh, I've had actually. I'm not say a lot of people. I shouldn't say it like that. I've had a few people say, "Well, what? Why? Why are there so many guides on there?" And I was like, "Well, I'm glad you asked." Or another, or on my ten foot, what? it doesn't have enough guides. That one's way too high. I'm like, no, it's right where it needs to be. Here, throw it. You'll know. <laughs> That's right. People, people has bought that rod, the ten foot from me, and hey, this this thing doesn't have enough guides. And I said, I said, go cast it. I said, cast it for a while, and if you're not happy with it, send it back to me. I'll buy it back from you. But <laughs> they work, and they work good. Yeah, you don't get that big. Uh, my big thing uh, I was worried about was the the wobble off of the spinning tackle off the first one off the reel because you know that that line is the one that's going to have the biggest. Ripple. That big. Yeah. So, yep. but with the over the bars and even my bullet, it's not you know it comes off and yeah it's going to little wobble but it's it tightens and smooths and it goes right through the guides no problem I've never had a, never looked at it and be like oh well here it goes it's eating my guide up no it it doesn't offer a ton of resistance yeah it sure doesn't we well, brought it up a little earlier uh, between the FSA and the over the bar bite detection is very important what is it or why is it an important factor when selecting a rod with that in mind? Well, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, they're saying, you know, I said, I tried to get them to talk a little bit about what they're fishing for and all that, because, you know, everybody doesn't need a 13 foot rod or a 12 foot rod or whatever, but being able to see that small bite is just as important as seeing that big bite. If I have, you know, the fishing's hot and you have a small fish on there and you're not seeing it, pretty soon you're going to get shark. And that's going to really ruin your day because you're going to lose some terminal tackle. And if you're not, if your drag's not set, you could lose a rod. So it's important not to leave fish just out there swimming if you can't, if you don't know they're there. So bite detection is is really important. Pompano fishing, you know, you want to see that pompano bite. And a lot of times, if it's spiked up, you won't see a bite, but you'll see a slack rod. If that rod lays back slack. You better pick it up and start reeling, especially during pompano season, <laughs> yeah. because a pompano is running to the beach. Then you'll catch up with them, and uh, then they'll be there. But you know, you you want to be able to see the bite, and if there's something on there, no matter how small it is, you really want to see it. You want to get that off there, because that hook might be the one that's going to catch that 17-inch whiting or your record pompano that you're going to miss. I love it when the rod's bent a little bit at the tip, and because you and Chip are the reason that I really got into that was I always have a bent, bent set. So if it ever goes slack, it's sitting up and down. I'm like, oh, oh, hey, oh, come here. What do we got going here? Uh, yeah, that I love that. line of slack and hang in the water, and you think your sinker's just come undone or it's breaking away, but you know, you get on that reel and start reeling and. Especially fishing with Sputnik. So if you start reeling, you might as well reel it all the way in anyway. Yeah. And then, you, you know, you got that big fish there. It's like a reward. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. Well, speaking of rewards. Bay check at 50 minutes. This is your second bay check of the day. Hopefully you have caught, again, more fish. And if you haven't, now would definitely be the time. You've only been fishing for an hour-ish. Now would be a good idea if you haven't caught yet. Change your bait, or it might be time to move. Maybe that spot wasn't producing for you. Now, well, let's get that figured out and get you back out there, and let's get you on some fish. This bait check was brought to you by Sword Fishing Products. We've talked about it in this episode. We love Sword. So head on over to swordfishingproducts.com. Take a look at all the amazing things that they have with their blades. Uh, they've got a new set of pliers with another set of something coming out soon. It hasn't hit the website. Shh, we can't tell you. But it's going to be great. And their apparel. 
sword fishing products is great stuff. I use it. I love it. And I will continue to use it forever. So thank you, sword. Love you guys. Definitely love your stuff. All right. All right. Here we go. What is your favorite fish to target? You know, I think pompano uh, are my favorite. Um, I fish for them in Jacksonville in in the in the winter in February when we can't catch anything here because it's too cold. Uh, we make a run down to Vero Beach and fish Vero South, trying to catch those pompano. And uh, you know, it's it's the rush you get from getting a big pompano and that thing laying over a flat and pulling them over a stand, sandbar and him just tugging that line is probably one of the best feelings fishing that I can tell you about. Mm. So that that's probably my favorite. My favorite fish to catch and eat is still the whiting. Um, man, I love fried whiting, and my family does. And a cooler with about 15 nice-sized whiting is, is a great day to me. Yeah. <laughs> just thinking about like, oh, oh, I want that. Light fire in the backyard, and go out there and make some uh, fried whiting nuggets and some hush puppies, and that's a good day. Oh man, that sounds really good. I, I didn't even think to throw the hush puppies in there. <laughs> oh, all right, that's heck. That's going to have to happen this year. There you go. Well, this question isn't on the paper, um, and it's more of a statement because uh, you brought it up with Pompano. It was actually you that taught me this um, because I was losing fish at the Shore Monster, and uh, you had mentioned that well, you'd ask me how I how I reel and how I do things, uh, and I would tell you you know before if the fish bit and he was on, I was jumping right to the rod and I was yanking it right out of the fish you know right out of the sand spike, and I'm just holding it and I'm just reeling, and you were like okay cool you can do that, it works. Uh, but you then said you could also leave it in the sand spike and get control and get, you know, while you have that one, you still have control, the rod's not bouncing. And then when it gets closer, you could, oh, I don't know, drop the tip and let it coast in. <laughs> fish on the beach. Uh-huh. And I was like, wait a minute, what do you mean? And I watched you do it. I was like, holy crap, that makes sense. You just, the, the, the tip stays down. And then you know, another lesson that I got from Tom Cabrera uh, was, you know, I lost a pompano, a nice pompano. It was probably the Florida record pompano because I didn't catch it. Um, but it breached out of the water and jam- jumped and ran. I was like, I've never seen a pompano jump out of the water with a hook in its mouth. And, of course, I lost it. And he's like, yeah, you need you see him jump. You should have that rod tip down. I was like, oh, all right, so two things together. But, yeah, bringing the rod tip down and sliding it up the beach, huge difference than high-sticking it. Absolutely. That's, that is one of the, the things. Is, and you can, you can fight him a lot better. You have more control of the fish. And if he's not jumping, he's not going to throw that hook. Um, I, you know, you watch uh, you watch guys fish, and when I watch these, the older guys around here fish like Wendell Nolan or Larry Finch. Uh, these guys, if you just if you go out and you watch these guys, and not even ask them a question, you can learn so much just by watching. But you know, I've been, I've been lucky enough where I've I've fished with the great fishermen in North Florida, Larry. Wendell, Noel, you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of them in our fishing club that that uh, that you know they they just catch fish and they know how. Yeah, <laughs> they make it look so effortless. Like, why can't you do it? Like, um, uh, I'm not you, Larry. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I've I've enjoyed the limited opportunities that I've had to have a conversation with Noel Wendell. Wendell especially. Wendell's funny. He's you know, he he's all quiet at first, but man, get him get him going, he'll talk. And then Larry Larry will give you a little tidbits, but you know, at the big weigh ins, you know, Larry's gonna get mobbed by everybody. So you get about yeah. five seconds it's like, Hey, good to see you. Catch you on the beach. Yeah. He can't hit Larry will catch fish when nobody else will. Yeah. <laughs> That's what uh Spencer had told me. Yeah, it's the truth. Oh man. Yeah, you guys got great people there that are so willing to share and it's it's fun what is a dream fish for you to catch you know it's that big permit <laughs> okay we we i fish a lot with noel we travel a lot fishing um we make trips down south um, we go over to 
St. George Island is one of my favorite places to fish. Um, we've been to uh, Pensacola last year, and we caught more fish than we could keep. Uh, the freezer in our rental was full, so we had to stop keeping. Fish. Yeah, you did. <laughs> all, all of them were limits. All of them were within limits. But, uh, you know, we catch a lot of fish. But that that big permit, I've caught small permit. But I want I want that big permit, and I want to feel that tug. I felt it um, two years ago when we were down there. I had one hooked, and I got the reel on it for a little bit. Um, Patrick Brogdon put us on fish down south, and um, and it's something that you, I, don't, I I haven't forgot about it, and I want more of it. And so I'm gonna say the the, the big permit, and then that big snook from the beach. Um, last year we went down south to Juneau and we fished with Allison uh, down there and I caught my first snook from the beach but it wasn't that it wasn't a big one but it was my first and I want to catch that I'm gonna say I'm gonna go 40 incher from the beach and, and I just want to feel that because it's it's nothing you're gonna keep but it's that picture and and you know you're catching what you're targeting yeah, that fight's going to be a fun fight. It is. That that small one that I caught last year, I mean, I was just excited as I could be about catching that on a a, a four-inch uh, whiting, I think it was, and it was just a toss into the surf. I said, it wasn't a cast. It was just a, a nice little toss. So this year I've got a couple of rods set up uh, to go down there and do that, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to tell you what. Uh, when I see you guys catch those reds off a of casted bait, I know it's not the beach, but it's in the sand, and I'll, I think I might be adding that to my list. Oh, you're talking about the red snapper run. Oh, yeah. yes. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, it does count. It's sandy. It is a beach. And it's, you know, it's sandy. <laughs> uh, but you know, that would be a thrill to pull up one of them those big red snapper off the beach off of a casted bait yeah yeah it's been fun watching those guys do it they've been it sure they've got it I've, I've, in. I've enjoyed watching from over here well that that person that we were speaking of will be taking his new rods out there and i'll let him make his announcements i won't drop it on here but he'll be he'll be catching some red snapper with his new 13 um i'm i'm ready to see that <laughs> Justin, is, I'm gonna say Justin is a good guy. He is. I I love that dude. He's just so much fun. He's a great guy. All right, come well, on. Go ahead. When we were over there for the uh, for the tournament, meeting all of you guys on the beach, and you know, it's 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 a great group of guys. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, we're definitely fortunate, and we've got a really tight circle of, that we all communicate and. It's it's just it's great. I wish there was something to, funny to say about it, but it's really is it's just a great crew. Yeah, well, you're com- you're coming up on your last ones here, so here you go. What do you recommend a new angler does before ever putting a line in the water in your areas? I'm a, I think the most important thing is to go to a beach where the people are surf fishing and, and sit back and watch and see what they do and see the results. Um, you know, that can, you can set your par or your, your goal there and you watch people catch whiting after whiting. And, you know, it's, it's, it's that part that's going to stir your, your interest or get you excited about it. That first fish off of your casted bait and your line, you know, but is number one is to observe what's going on. And then the second thing is is probably try to try to meet up with someone to take you fishing before you go out on your own because that's can your learning curve is going to be flattened out a lot by doing that and there's a lot of good people around here um, that you can go with they have seminars on the beach um, there's so many ways to flatten that learning curve out especially in North Florida now and probably over there too if somebody walked up on you guys and say hey tell me what you're doing i'm sure they'll get an earful from you guys same way around here most fishermen 
don't mind talking to people on the beach. And that's, you know, that's one reason I fly the flag, the American flag when I'm fishing, because I, I want people to come up and talk to me. And you would not believe the people that will come up and talk to you or want to take the picture of their flag on the beach because they're not used to seeing that. Yeah. But then that's that segue into talking about fishing and, and rods and reels or, or, you know, trying to stir their interest. Yeah, you were the reason that uh, I started flying mine because I finally finally got a, a rod holder or I finally got a pole that I could put my flag on and be like, all right, cool. And you're right. People, I've had so many people stop and take pictures and like, can we take a picture? I'm like, yeah, I've had it. You want to talk about fishing? Because I do. <laughs> and the, re the reason I fly it is we have a friend that's from, oh, he's up in Georgia. His name's Philip Peopleo. And we fished with him a, a few times over at St. George Island. And he had a big American flag, and he had a Texas flag. And I'm not sure if it was, a, I don't remember if it was a Longhorn or an Aggie flag, but that thing looked so big on the beach and so good. I said, I'm going to do that. I'm, and that's who I got it from. And, uh, you know, he's a great, a great fisherman and a good friend. And uh, a lot of people are flying those flags now. It's good to see. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm never sad when I'm out there seeing that. All right, last question. Here we go. What's next for you? Retirement. No, <laughs> in short, in, I was, I'm fortunate. I got to retire from Caterpillar after 35 years, and I, I retired at a young age. But what's next for me is, is really I want to get out and be able to travel to different fishing destinations, especially around Florida. Um, there's so much so much available and so much you can learn about the different places and and so many p people to meet i mean you know how did i meet you guys over in pensacola all right i think y'all might have came over here for uh, ben's tournament um and, and you know really that's when we started putting names to fa our faces to names and it's it's getting out to meet people doing the things we love now as far as, far as florida surf tackle um, you know, I'm going I'm to start carrying sword products. I don't carry a lot on my website, um, but I, I want to carry quality stuff that, that stirs people's interest and be able to help them get to where they want to go. So, you know, it, it's going to be traveling for me and fishing and meeting more people like you guys all around the state. Well, anybody that gets to hang out with you is lucky. Because you're a lot of fun to be around, learn from, and fish with. So thank you for always being so per so great as, of a person that's so willing to have a conversation with people and be so open and really share your knowledge and time with. Well, you know what I, I'm I'm very fortunate that I got to I got free fishing lessons from Noel for a lot of years, and then you know everybody in Florida surf casters. Uh, club and, and just you know anybody on the beach um, they're they're more than likely going to share something maybe not maybe not everything but they're going to share something that you're going to be able to learn from well on that note thank you uh, you you've dumped so much knowledge into tonight and thank you for really breaking down the rods and the differences it's Again, I, I've said it before. I'll happily say it again. A great product. Uh, I have my 10. I have my bullet, my 12-foot bullet. Um, I have my 13-foot Accios, <laughs> which always is like, I'm going to understand this rod. I'm going to understand right. this rod. <laughs> have and my dog. Go, go ahead. You have something in your house that's not yours, but it's Abby's. Uh-huh. Pretty good fishing rod, too. I was just about to say that. So, and my daughter fishes with an 11, 11 foot run out, and she, uh, we haven't posted about it because we didn't have the most greatest days fishing, unfortunately. Uh, we, we definitely hit the grass in the sad time. But she's been between the 10 foot uh, over the bar and the 11 foot run out, she's been getting better with her casting. So, she's finally, you know, like, okay, I, she's starting to understand it better and do it on her own. So uh, she's been having a lot of fun with that rod. So she has her she has her rod now that I'm like that's yours. If you want me to cast it, I'll cast it. But everything else, that's 100 percent your rod. You have to maintain it. You have to mind it. You have to do it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, she. I mean, she's. You've seen it. You know, she's what she pulled in her winning, what, 
at Ben's tournament, she pulled in her winning Pompano on the over the bar ten. Yeah. Um. And then the whiting, I think, was on. I want to say it was on a twelve foot over the bar, if I remember correctly. I'd have to go back and look at the pictures, but yeah, she's. Yeah, she's she's doing really well. She's learning a lot. I keep telling her, I'm like, you don't realize how lucky it is that you're getting to get the cyclic knowledge from all these people. I hope you're having fun with it. She's like, well, it's fun. I'm like, all right, just <laughs> keep loving it. <laughs> keep letting me have dad daughter cool. time. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate all the time for today and everything that you've given us and and definitely given me. I appreciate all of it, and I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you very much, Brian. This is this has been a great evening. Well, thank you. All right, we'll talk soon. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mark Burford from Florida Surf Tackle. I hope you picked up a ton of knowledge because I know even fishing with him, listening to tonight, I picked up a couple more things that I didn't know and that I will actually start using a little bit more and really help me understand the rods a lot better. Uh, I did not realize the the difference is so much uh, all the way down. I knew the constructions were slightly different. I didn't realize how much so. Uh, we uh, didn't get to the third bait check today. So we've been listening for just a little bit short of that. But your third bait check, because it is the end of the show, make sure that you check that line and then check the next episode. The third and final bait check has been brought to you by The Sinker Guy. We've talked about him a lot tonight. But go on over to thesinkerguy.com. Take a look at all his Sputnik sinkers. He also has several other types of sinkers. He has tons of other terminal tackle for your availability to get your hands on. So head on over to thesinkerguy.com and get yourself resupplied. Well, until next week. I hope this helped you. If it did, don't forget to like, follow, share, subscribe. Give this out to somebody because it's going to help them become a better angler. Mark Turk talked a lot about the Jacksonville area all the way down to Vero Beach, the east coast of Florida. He's fished in many different areas, and he has shared a lot of that in his groups. And you can go take a look and get your research from there. So until next week, you've been listening to Find a Demo Surf Fishing. Great time. Glad you were here. I'll see you. I'm out.